everyone, Broheen here from the Gamers Emporium channel, bringing you another Warrior solo guide. This one's actually been around for a while, but I've never even touched it before, and I kind of wish I had before I hit, you know, level 60, because it would have been a lot easier to get around. I mean, don't get me wrong, Champ Lord or War Champ, Warlord Champion, how, whatever you want to call it, um, it, it did very well for the longest time, but once I hit level 60 and started to get up to like level 61 and 62, things started to get a lot harder to kill and that spec didn't really have that much output. Now, I did update that guide and it does work better than the previous one, but it's still, I think things need to be changed on Tryon's end for those specs to kind of be brought together a little bit better than what they do now. So, but this spec actually worked really, really well. Um, it's it's called what do they call it? It's Rift Blade. It's a lot of people call it Rift Lord. Um, it's your standard solo spec. Um, props to Seton, Man of Legends, by the way. He's the one where I got this guide from. You can see his guide at manoflegends.com under the Rift Warrior guides. So check that out. Seton's a pretty awesome fellow. He's my favorite English YouTuber. So um, pretty cool guy from what I can tell. I haven't met him, but one day maybe. So anyways, 61 Rift Blade. The Warlord goes to 4 points in Soldier's Might. 11 points in Tempest, 5 in Amped, 5 in Enhanced Power, and then 1 in Jolt. Jolt is your little self-heal. Your level 61 is Enduring Survival, 62 is Steadfast Soul, 63 is Energy Reserves, 64 is Ethereal Strikes, and 65 is Power Manipulation. Now again, as in the last video I was talking about, uh, Power Manipulation and Power Variation you can switch between them if you like, because power variation seems to be better used when you're going to be doing a lot of AoE damage, which the spec is capable of. I know it's pretty much advertised as a single target, but it does some pretty rockin' AoE for, for what it is out in the world there. But for the time being, we're going to stick with power manipulation because this is primarily a single target survivability spec. And check the description for the Magello link to that soul tree, and you can take care of setting it up via that. So, alright, so let's take a look at macros. <clears throat> On to the next section. Right, Rift Blade. So we have four macros that we use. We have a single target builder, which is as follows. We'll also, these will all also be copy and pasted into the description. We have our finisher macro which is primarily, you know, edit your fiery burst, icy burst, all that stuff, uh, even your flame spear and frost strike and whatnot, that all adds debuffs to the enemies to make them do more elemental, or take more elemental damage, I should say. So um, we have a builder finisher for single target. We also have an AoE builder and an AoE finisher. Now the AoE builders and finishers have a cast not active fork in it. Fork is your ability that makes spear abilities hit up to five enemies so if you're going to switch back to single target make sure you toggle that back off or set up a macro button well that wouldn't really make sense set up a macro button to turn it off um i i guess i was more referring to like if you're going to put in your single target builder if there's a way you can toggle the macro off just by pressing the builder button uh, but i haven't actually looked at that i've just been toggling it off manually so not a big deal so pretty much now for the bar layout um, the buffs you're going to use are Blade of the Ascended, Empower, Enhanced Conductivity, Recovery Posture, Avatar of the Rift, and Avatar of the Water. Now you're allowed two Avatar buffs because of your level 63 mastery also. So that works very well with Rift Blade. Uh, as far as uh, the another Avatar macro, when you're running around, please switch to Avatar of Wind because it increases your dodge, blah, blah, who cares. But it increases your run speed or movement speed by 16%, which is crazy good for you know something that's virtually permanent. And when you're soloing, running around cross-country kind of sucks. So if you get knocked off your mount, you can still get away 16% faster. So the second bar, pretty much... I have my AoE set up here, you know, the AoE Builder, AoE Finisher. Um, I have Rift Travel, target, teleports to the target location, so you can actually set that, you know, on the ground and teleport like so. Ooh, zoom in. Not a good example, but you get the hint. Um, I have Jolt on the bar. 
you don't want to really want to use that. According to Seton's guide, you really don't want to use that unless you're below 50% health and you really need the heal because it does cost 20 power. 20 power is very crucial. If you spam it constantly, you will get power starved, and then you're going to dig yourself a hole you won't get out of. Fork is on the bar. Break free also on the bar. Stone shield there just to watch. See when it's coming up cooldown so you can adjust in you know situations. Then for the main bar, I have Builder Finisher, Rift Implosion. Rift Implosion is really good because the more you attack, the more damage this is going to do. It debuffs the enemy. and After 8 seconds, it deals damage, and then it's increased by 15% per Implosion Surge on the enemy. Implosion Surges happen because the enemy gets attacked with an elemental damage. So you'll see stacks of a debuff on the enemy up to 5 for Implosion Surge, and then after 8 seconds, this goes off and it hits pretty damn hard now this debuff can be on all enemies at once so let's say you want to toggle on fork in aoe if you dot them all up with rift implosion first and then start spamming your aoe macro away and finishers away then you're going to have five rift implosions kind of doing a chain attack um, one after another on all these and it's going to bring all their health down very quickly keep frost strike here i'll explain that in a moment you get some good utility, you get Sergeant's Order, and you get Rift Walk, and then you get Stone Spear. So, pretty awesome, right? So, let's take a look at rotation. So, rotation-wise, for single target, you're going to pretty much be starting off with Rift Strike first. So, you're going to hit the macro once. And then the only reason why Frost Strike can't be added into the macro is because it's an instant, which really kind of stinks. But... Um, Frost Strike is a priority, second in line, because Rift Strike first increases Warrior's non-physical damage by 25 seconds, so it's a big buff for you, and deals a lot of damage, and that'll increase your overall DPS, you know, big time. Then second, you want to hit with a Frost Strike, because that's going to make the enemy take more elemental damage, in fact, by 30%, so if you put them two together, that's 55% more damage just off two abilities that they're going to be taking. So after Rift Strike and Frost Strike, then you can spam and then use Fiery Burst. Your finishers are not on a global cooldown, so in between, after you use that third attack, or when you gain that third attack point, spam a finisher right away. By the time the global cooldown's over with, you can start up with your builder again. Now, Rift Implosion is a good thing to have uh, basically for your opening macro or no, your opening sequence by the way you should have arcane manipulation applied not sorry not arcane manipulation power manipulation for the warrior put power manipulation in there um, and use rift implosion on all of the enemies you plan on attacking whether it be one or five or whatever but open with that because then when you start doing your builder and frost strike and your finishers that rift implosion is going to go off after eight seconds and just annihilate so and that's pretty much it when we talk about aoe pretty much i have the the non-act or the not active function in the macro so when you start casting aoe it's going to automatically turn on fork now all your spear abilities are going to hit multiple targets and then your finishers for that are also not on a global cooldown, so you want to use them in between when you gain that third attack point and when you start for your first one again. Um, that's pretty much it, guys. So it's pretty awesome. The way it works is because you get 8% of healing from recovery posture, and then from... There's one blade. Let me find the blade here so that way you can actually see. Blade of Elemental Affinity, all your builders have a 25% chance to heal you for 20% of attack power. So that's every four times you're going to get a fifth of your attack power back in health. So on a good day, you're going to get 28% healing, So, which is a lot better than Champ Lord. So, uh, but Champ Lord doesn't, has a lot more of an AoE capability than what this does. However, this one bursts very high in AoE. So let's take a look. Rotation, again, this is a survivability spec. It is not a raid DPS spec. So we're going to start off. Arcane or, uh, Power manipulation is in the builder. So we're going to start off by dotting it with a Rift Implosion. Hit the builder once. Hit a Frost Strike. Spam your builder. And in between there, if you watch, here's my third attack point. 
hit the finisher right in between there and keep the global cooldown going. Refresh Rift Implosion every single time it comes off cooldown and make sure you're watching your Frost Strike to refresh that because otherwise you're going to lose the, the extra percentage of damage taken. So now let's, uh, let's back up. I'm going to quick give you a little show of the AoE. The AoE is pretty sweet. Apparently I did all that with no buffs. Shame on me, shame on me. So let's buff up. 11k for no buffs, that was pretty good. So, alright, so AoE, when you first cast this macro, first, you, you can rift implode, you know, quite a few enemies here. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll, we'll do five enemies, and then we'll hit with... Bam! That was pretty good. So now we'll get up close. Because this is a melee spec, but it does have some decent range. So 50k, it's actually a lot better than Champ Lord. So if I had to recommend one of the two, I would say use this. Even though it's supposed to be just a single target spec, but it, it does very phenomenal AoE, I will say. It does some pretty good AoE. So, okay. So any questions... You know, please feel free to comment, and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. As I said, Seaton, the Man of Legends, he gets the credit for this. Check out his channel, youtube.com slash Legends, And you can check out his website at manoflegends.com and, you know, see all the warrior, rogue, cleric, anything you want on there. It's it's pretty pretty good website, and I love the layout of it. So good job, Seaton, and thanks for doing what you do. So, all right. Anything else, you guys can let me know in the comments and uh, build this spec, and hopefully this makes your run from 60 to 65 through um, through Gorboro Reef, Dromheim, and Tarkin Glacier a little bit easier because this is it's a little bit tougher than Champ Lord, but it's definitely a lot better spec for soloing. So, all right. So thanks again for watching, guys, and have an awesome night.